Good morning. We're happy to see you here. It's hard to believe that 2024 is already in full swing. Wow. Now our lesson for this morning is doing violence to others. As usual, we'll wait until after the song led by David Lee before we go ahead, okay? Hello? This is our song. Once I was straying in sin's dark valley. No hope within could I see. They searched through heaven and found a savior to save a poor lost soul like me. What a savior, oh hallelujah. His heart was broken on Calvary. His hands were nail scarred. His side was riven. He gave his lifeblood for even me. He left the Father with all his riches, with calmness sweet and serene, came down from heaven and gave his life blood to make the vilest sinner clean. What a savior, oh hallelujah. His heart was broken on Calvary. His hands were nail scarred. His side was riven. He gave his lifeblood for even me. Death's chilly waters I'll soon be crossing. His hand will lead me safely o'er. I'll join the chorus in that great city and sing up there forevermore. What a savior, oh hallelujah. His heart was broken on Calvary. His hands were nail scarred. His side was riven. He gave his lifeblood for even me. Amen. Thank you, David, for a fine song. There's many things in the song we realize. Jesus suffered violence to himself. What we read in the New Testament, it's hard to believe. Wow, what they did to Jesus. They spat on him beat him, put a crown of thorns on his head, and also beat him with a cat of nine tails. They would slash him and it would tear his, the skin on his back, doing violence to others. Today, people still do that. It's hard to believe, but it's true, okay? Jesus is the Son of God who came to earth to die for sinners. In 1 Timothy, that's where Paul wrote to a young preacher named Timothy. 
He says, what I say is true, and you should fully accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's true. He even came to save you. And I am the worst of those sinners. That's how Paul felt. You remember the story when he was known as Saul of Tarsus. He thought it was wrong about Jesus Christ. He persecuted the church. Some even were killed. Most of them were put in jail. But then he met Jesus on the way to Damascus. He realized that he was very much wrong for thinking, uh, for persecuting people who believed in Jesus. He felt upset and refused to eat for three days. He rejected all food and drink until Ananias, a Christian who lived in Damascus, came in and healed him so he could see. He says, why, asked him, why do you wait? Arise and be baptized, calling on the name of the Lord. And from then on, Paul, as we know him, his Old Testament name was Saul. He put it away and went by Paul from then on. And he was active for the Lord. Wow. He did much to spread the gospel. We thank God for him. Jesus came that people can have life and have plenty of life. See, Jesus arose. The woman was surprised and happy that Jesus was still alive. But Jesus also gives us life here on earth and later in heaven, where we will live forever. Jesus said, a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Maybe you've experienced that. My home was broken into one time. When I came home, I was shocked. It was a mess. Wow. Thieves came to come to steal, kill. Now, of course, in my case, no one was killed, but destroyed. Yes, yeah, some things were destroyed. Wow. And finally in red, it says, but I, meaning Jesus, Jesus says, but I came to give life, life that is full and good. We can enjoy life even when we are persecuted and suffering a lot, we still have the promise of life forever in heaven. That's why when Stephen, a Christian, was being persecuted and stoned to death, he knelt down and cried out, Jesus, don't lay this sin against them. He prayed for those who were killing him. And then he fell over and died. And we know that Stephen would rise and go to heaven and enjoy life there. Jesus came that people can have happiness. We're happy because we have a home in heaven. Life on earth is 
it's just short. But in heaven, it is forever. Paul wrote to, uh, wrote a letter to the Philippians, and he said, And now, my brothers and sisters, be happy in the Lord. But Jesus warned about false prophets. Some will appear and teach false things. Jesus said, many false prophets will come. They will cause many people to believe wrong things. Some things that we hear, it's like, wait a minute, that's strange. We must be careful to read your Bible. Decide what Jesus meant when you read. And then you understand. That way, if someone tells you something, a, a different story, you can resist it. See, you don't say the same thing as what the Bible says. So be careful. Know your Bible. Don't be lazy. Depend on only me to explain things? Uh, uh, yeah, no. Read your Bible. Even I can make mistakes. So you need to read your Bible and be careful of what you hear. Okay? Some false prophets were the Pharisees themselves. Jesus warned, saying, stay away from the Pharisees. Why? They lead the people, but they are like the blind leading other blind men. Jesus gave a picture. And if a blind man leads another blind man, then both men will fall into a hole. One blind, blind person says, I know the way. He's walking along. Another blind man says, okay. And he follows him. But the first blind man can't see a hole. They walk along and both of them fall into it. That's what Jesus says. We need to be careful of false prophets. They are blind themselves. Jesus taught us to love other people and not to do any violence. This is a good example. Talking about Jesus' arrest. Then the men came and grabbed Jesus and arrested him. When that happened, one of the followers with Jesus grabbed his sword and pulled it out. This follower hit the servant of the high priest with the sword and cut off his ear. Jesus said to the man, put your sword back in its place. People that use swords will be killed with swords. What we read 
what we read a while ago was from Matthew. Mm -hmm. Now we look yeah. at the same at John's gospel. Mm -hmm. Maybe because John mm -hmm. was there. Mm -hmm. John saw mm -hmm. what happened. Mm -hmm. John tells us who mm -hmm. was the apostle that cut off the ear mm -hmm. of the high priest's mm -hmm. servant, mm -hmm. who was also a servant. Are you curious? Okay. Simon Peter, that's the name of the person, had a sword. He took out the sword and struck the servant of the high priest. Peter cut off the servant's right ear. The servant, in front he says, the servant's name was Malchus. All those details in John, you need to remember. He, he saw it, or he remembered. Now Jesus was saying that people who live violently would die violently. For example, here in Memphis, I'm sorry to say, has its share of violence, of violent shooters. Every day I see on TV, they announce on the news that someone was hurt badly or killed by gunshots. They're lying and hurting. They take them to the hospital, and it's too late, they die. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they hear shooting, they go to find out, and the person's already dead. Yeah. It's sad that people think yeah. about violence, and they think violence yeah. Yeah. is the only way to solve problems. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Violence will yeah. bring more violence. Yeah. 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 That's what yeah. makes Satan happy to see. If you have a habit of shooting, you might die by violence. That's what Jesus said. People who use swords will die by swords. Also, Jesus taught us to love all people and not to do violence to them. This is what Jesus said. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But Jesus says the opposite. But I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those people who do bad things to you. That's not easy, I know. I get upset sometimes. But you must control yourself and pray for them. That's what Jesus did. When the soldiers were nailing Jesus to the cross, and they stood the cross up, Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Wow. Jesus suffered, yes, but he prayed for the soldiers because they didn't know what they were doing. The same as the people who hurt you, who rob you, and different things. They don't know what they're doing. Someday they'll find out and be sorry. If you do that, meaning be kind, help people, even though you don't like them, meaning they're your enemies, then you will be true sons of your Father in heaven.
remember that. If you try for peace, God will call you a son, a true son, because you followed his way. You notice Jesus says, your father lets the sun rise for the good people and, and what? The bad people. Yes. Maybe you get up in the morning. It's a beautiful day. And you enjoy it. But remember, the bad people enjoy it too. Your father sends rain to the people that do good and to the people that do wrong. The rain is good for farming. Good people live on the farm and they're happy it rains. And it helps the crops to grow. Bad people are the same way. The rain, oh, it's fine. We need the rain to grow. So God is kind to both the good and the bad people. Some men believing that a different religion caused 9-11. You remember that happening? The violence. They think it would solve and good be good to all the world. No. It caused the U.S. to decide to stand against the evil. But unfortunately, as the years go by, they forgot. And they praise evil people. Like what happened when Hamas attacked the Jewish people in Israel. And now some colleges in America support Hamas. They overlook the fact that they were cruel and kill people and beheaded babies and different things. They supported it. They support Hamas. But they don't realize that they're doing wrong. Let us not act as misled, I mean, led wrongly religionists but as true children of God. Follow what God says. One example, a long time ago in England, a man named William Tyndale had translated the Bible into English. But at that time, the Church of England was against it. They thought it was trouble. So they pulled in, him into coming in and they captured him and made him a prisoner. And then they burned him to death. Before he died, William Tyndale said, Father, I pray that you will open the eyes of the King of England and then he died that happened <clears throat> and they changed government and the king agreed to let the new translation of the Bible and that's called the King James Bible wow and it spread throughout the world the English-speaking people loved it, the Bible. It was beautiful. Of course, it's a little hard for the deaf to read, but some deaf can read it, and they understand. But we thank God that William Tyndale, before he died, prayed 
that the eyes of the king of England would be open. It's the same as I pray that all of you watching will have your eyes open and follow God's way. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your continued love for us and for the teaching that your son gives us that we should follow to love our enemies no matter if we don't like them or no matter if we don't like it. We do pray for Hamas that they will wake up and realize that they are wrong. We also pray for the Jews that they will wake up. We pray for all who haven't yet had eyes, had their eyes open and they will realize the truth that you love us and that you don't want us to do, to do harm to each other and help us to realize that we must follow your way. We thank you for Jesus who taught us. Through Jesus' name, amen. Well, hope you remember this. If you want to contact me, I do receive contact from time to time. And I'm glad to try to help you. May God bless you. And we still love you.